right, so um, we last left off with, um, we're talking about Chinese nationalists and Chinese communists. Um, Chinese nationalists founded by Sun Yongshan around 894, and then um, Chinese communists founded uh, by, Mao was one of the founders, right, uh, around 1921. In 1921, a group met in Shanghai to organize the Chinese Communist Party, also known as Gong Changdang, uh, Mao Zedong, and assistant librarian at Beijing University was amongst one of its founders. Later, he would become China's greatest revolutionary leader. Mao Zedong had already begun to develop his own brand of communism. Lenin had based his Marxist revolution on his organization of Russian cities. Mao envisioned a different setting. He believed that uh, he could bring revolution to a rural countryside where peasants could be the true revolutionaries. So in Karl Marx's theory, uh, we understand that society goes through revolutionary, uh, goes through evolutionary periods, uh, starting as hunter-gatherers and then going to a feudal society, then going to, uh, then going to uh, industrialism and then going to capitalism, and then reaching a dictatorship by the proletariat and then eventually reaching communism. So that's what Karl Marx believed, that society goes through these evolutionary periods, uh, industrialism being one of them, right? Industrialization being one of those evolutionary periods. Uh, China had not gone through an industrial period yet. Uh, therefore, Mao's ideas of communism in China were very radical and going against the theories of Karl Marx. He argued his point passionately in 1927, and I quote, the force of the peasantry is like that of the raging winds and driving rain. It is rapidly increasing in violence. No force can stand in its way. The peasantry will tear apart all nets which bind it and hasten along the road to liberation. They will bury beneath them all forces of, and I quote, uh, I like to emphasize here, imperialism, militarism, corrupt officialdom, village bosses, and evil gentry. And that's a quote from Mao Zedong. Uh, those last terms, imperialism, militarism, and corrupt officialdom, I think those are terms that we've gone over quite often in this class, uh, particularly imperialism. If I was to ask you guys what imperialism was, would you guys be able to give me an answer? Yeah. yeah. What is imperialism? It's when a large nation takes a smaller nation. A strong nation takes a smaller nation. Great, great. Uh, perfect. Couldn't have said it better myself. Another quote from Mao was, um, political power grows out of the barrel of a gun. I think that says a lot about the kind of person he was. While the Chinese Communist Party was forming, Sun Zhongshan and the, his Nationalist Party, the Kuomintang, set up a government in South China. Actually, the, um, the anthem for the Chinese Communists, Mao Gong Changdang, Mao Sun Zhong Guo, uh, No Communist Party of China, No New China, is actually a rendition, a Modification of a song created by the nationalist Mao Kuomintang, Mao Zedong Guo, meaning no nationalist party, no new China, right? So that was actually a, uh, the, the Communist Party kind of took that and made it their own song, right? Uh, like the communists, Sun Zhongshan became uh, disillusioned with the Western democracies uh, that refused to support his struggling government. Sun decided to ally the Kuomintang with the newly formed Communist Party, the Gongtangdang. He hoped to unite all the revolutionary groups for a common cause. Lenin seized the opportunity to help China's nationalist government. In 1923, he sent military advisors and equipment to the nationalists in return for allowing the Chinese communists uh, to join the nationalists, right? So Lenin brokered a deal between the nationalists and the communists and they started working together, right? After Sun Gongchan died in 1925, Jiang Jiechi, uh, also known as Chiang Kai-shek, which I guess is a Cantonese way of pronouncing his name, um, is, which is one of your vocabulary terms, by the way, Jiang Jiechi. Um, so it's one of your vocab terms, uh, also called Chiang Kai-shek. Uh, took over uh, the Kuomintang uh, around 1925 after Sun Zhongchang died. So Sun Zhongchang died and Jiang Jiechi took over in 1925. Jiang was the son of a middle class merchant. Many, Jiang, many of Jiang's followers were bankers and business people. Like Jiang, they feared the communist goal of creating a socialist economy modeled after the Soviet Union. 
Jiang had promised democracy and political rights to all Chinese. Yet his government became steadily less democratic and more corrupt. Most peasants believed that Jiang was doing little to improve their lives. As a result, many peasants threw their support behind the Chinese Communist Party. To enlist the support of the peasants, Mao divided land that the communists won amongst the local farmers. So instead of uh, taking the land and giving it to the officials, he would divide it amongst the peasants and local farmers. At first, Jiang put aside his differences with the communists. Uh, together, Jiang's nationalist forces and the communists successfully fought uh, the warlords. And around this time, China kind of looked like this, and there was many warlords controlling many parts of China. Uh, soon afterward, though, he returned against the communists. In April 1927, nationalist troops and uh, armed gangs moved into Shanghai. They killed many communist leaders and trade union members. Uh, in the city streets. Similar killings took place in other cities. The nationalists nearly wiped out the Chinese Communist Party in 1927. In 1928, Jiang became president of the Nationalist Republic of China, also known as Zhonghua Mingguo, which is one of your vocabulary terms. So we're doing the uh, China lecture, Sean, if you want to pull that out. So in 1928, Jiang Jiechi became president of the Nationalist Republic of China. It was founded as a provisional government around 1928, around 19, uh, 1912, sorry. It was founded as a provisional government around 1912. But in 1928, Jiang Jiechi became president of the Nationalist Republic of China, also known as Zhonghua Mingguo. Uh, So in Chinese, um, if someone is a Zhongguo Ren, it means that they are born in China, right? Uh, however, if you are, if your parents are Zhongguo Ren and you were born in, let's say, like America or some other country, then you are referred to as Hua Ren, uh, and your parents are the Zhongguo Ren. Uh, so I guess Hua is kind of like a term for uh, Chinese ethnicity or culture. It's one of the terms. Great Britain and the United States both formally recognized the new government. Uh, because of the slaughter of the Chinese communists at Shanghai, the Soviet Union notably did not. Jiang's treachery also had long-term effects. The communist deep-seated hatred over the massacre erupted in a civil war that will last until 1949. By 1930, nationalists and communists were fighting a bloody civil war. Mao and other communist leaders established themselves in the footholds of South Central China. Mao referred to this tactic of taking his revolution to the countryside as swimming in the peasant sea. He recruited the peasants to join his Red Army. He then trained them in guerrilla warfare. Guerrilla warfare is one of your vocabulary terms. Simply put, it's uh, small bands of soldiers uh, doing hit and run tactics against uh, a conventional standing army. So that would be your definition that you would put down for guerrilla warfare. It's one of the definitions in the one of your vocabulary terms that you should write down right now. Um, small bands of soldiers doing hit and run tactics against a conventional standing army. Uh, nationalists attacked, the nationalists attacked the communists repeatedly but failed to drive them out. In 1933, Jiang gathered an army of at least 700,000 men. Jiang's army uh, surrounded the communist mountain stronghold. Outnumbered, the communist leaders realized that they faced defeat. In a daring move, 100,000 communist forces fled. They began a hazardous 6,000 mile long march uh, called the Long March, <laughs> uh, which is one of your vocabulary terms.
translated 19, um, 1933, about 6,000 miles. It was the communists retreat from the nationalists, right? So the nationalists defeated the communists and the communists are doing this 6,000 mile long march Also known as Changzheng. Uh, this distance is about the distance from New York to San Francisco and back again. So imagine walking from here to San Francisco and then back again, quite the, quite the walk, right? They crossed miles of swampland. They slept sitting up, leaning back to back in pairs uh, to keep from sinking into the mud and drowning. In total, the communists crossed uh, about 18, uh, they crossed 18 miles 18 mountain ranges and 24 rivers in the year-long flight from the nationalists. Between 1934 and 1935, the communists kept only a step ahead of Jiang's forces. Thousands died from hunger, cold exposure, and battle wounds. Finally, after a little more than a year, Mao and the seven or 8,000 communist survivors settled in caves in northwestern China. There they gained new followers. Meanwhile, as civil war between nationalists and communists raged, Japan invaded China. Do you have a question? So why did, why did they do the long march here? Because the Chinese nationalists defeated the communists. Uh -huh. And so they're doing this long march and retreat from the nationalist forces. In 1931, as the Chinese fought each other, the Japanese watched uh, the power struggle with rising interest. Japanese forces took advantage of China's weakening situation. They invaded Manchuria, an industrialized province in northeastern part of China that we've talked about quite often in this class. Um, in 1937, the Japanese launched an all-out invasion of China. Massive bombings of villages and cities killed thousands of Chinese. The destruction of farms caused many more to die of starvation. By 1938, Japan held control of a large portion of China. The Japanese threat forced an uneasy truce between Jiang and Mao's forces. Uh, the civil war gradually ground to a halt as nationalists and communists temporarily <coughs> united to fight the Japanese. The National Assembly further agreed to promote changes outlined in Sun Zhongshan's three principles of the people that we talked about in the last class, uh, nationalism, democracy, and people's livelihood. As you will learn in this next uh, activity, similar principles were also serving as a guiding force in India and Southwest Asia.